What's up guys, it's Dalmatter here, and today we're going to be reacting to 40k Theories, the past deeds of the lost Primarchs. So, I'm sure everyone that's watching this video is aware. There were supposed to be 20 Primarchs, there's only 18. Two of them have gone missing slash erased from the history books, and not much has ever talked about them, except kind of in passing in some of the passages. Um, the, the one that I remember specifically was, I believe it was Sanguinius talking to Gilliman where he said that he doesn't want people finding out about his, um, what they call the blood curse, I believe is what it's called. Um, the blood rage, the blood curse or something like that. And basically how, you know, uh, all of his troops can go into this kind of like blood frenzy and that he implies something similar happened to one of the other Primarchs that ends up going missing. And that's about all I know about it. Um, that being said, this is an 11 minute video, so there's probably a bit more. Uh, anyway, I'm really excited to watch this video because I've, I've wanted to know about these guys for a long time. And people tell me that there's not much information, so... Uh, link to the original video down below. And again, this is a 40k Theories, The Past Deeds of the Lost Primarchs. Let's jump into it. Are we playing? Yep. During the final days of the Terran Unification Wars, the Emperor of Mankind would begin the undertaking of his Primarch project, creating 20 generals made from his own genetic material to lead his armies in the forthcoming Great Crusade. The incubation pods containing these nascent Primarchs, however, would be scattered throughout the galaxy thanks in part to the actions of the Chaos Gods. The Emperor would use the data collected from this project, as well as genetic samples taken from his gene sons, in order to create a new breed of genetically augmented warrior. This would lead to the creation of the 20 Space Marine Legions of the First Founding. Over time, all of the Primarchs would be reunited with their father, and gifted command of the legions of warriors that were derived from their genetic template. Each Primarch would also achieve great accomplishments throughout the course of their lives, often on multiple occasions. Rebute Gilliman of the Ultramarines Legion would unite several planetary systems into a great empire long before his reunion with the Emperor. Fulgrim of the Emperor's children would bring an entire world into compliance using less than a dozen warriors. These two such examples are but a fragment of all the great endeavours undertaken by the Primarchs. But what about the accomplishments achieved by the Lost and the Purged? The Lost and the Purged are informal terms used to describe the Primarchs of the 2nd and 11th Legions. These two particular Primarchs had their names, including those of their legions and any records pertaining to them, erased from the annals of Imperial history, prior to the events of the Horus Heresy for some unknown transgression. Now, before we continue, we will not be attempting to cover what fate befell the lost Primarchs, but rather attempt to catalogue what deeds the pair may have accomplished in life. The qualities and traits of the 11th Primarch are completely unknown. However, we do have some information in regards to the second Primarch and his personality. The novel Fulgrim the Palatine Phoenix, which takes place shortly after Fulgrim's reunion with the Emperor of Mankind, details the following information about the Lord of the Second Legion, after Fulgrim bragged that he would be able to bring an entire world into compliance by himself, and would be ridiculed by his brothers as a result. Fulgrim bowed his head, suddenly weary. Seven voices raised in doubt, seven brothers arrayed against the Eighth. Even the normally contemplative Master of the Second had broken his silence to accuse Fulgrim of hubris. He snorted. 
there was an old Terran saying about pots and kettles. He'd refrained from sharing it at the time. His quiet brother had no sense of humour that he was aware of. Perhaps that was why he spoke so little. Within the novel Clone Lord, Flavius Alconex, Prefector of the Emperor's Children Legion's Phoenix Guard, leads Fabius Bile and the forces under the Apothecary's command deep within the Ultima Segmentum in order to recover a lost cache of pure and untainted Emperor's Children gene seed from the time of the Great Crusade. When they came across the Imga Monolith, a vast and mysterious structure that would later be revealed to be of Necrontier origin, Alkanex recalls a particular story told to him by Fulgrim that details the actions of one of the lost Primarchs who had led a voyage to this particular region at some unknown point in time during the Great Crusade. Fulgrim made mention of it once. Apparently one of the two Forgotten Ones was said to have led an expedition to its Black Heart in the early centuries of the Great Crusade. Though why he was out this far, and what he might have found, was never recorded, probably for the best. The galaxy has devils enough without letting out whatever resides there. Initially, given the language stating that this particular act was undertaken early in the Great Crusade, this would primarily suggest that this was an action that was undertaken by the Second Legion, given how the Second Legion's Primarch was the third Primarch to be rediscovered by Imperial forces, and that the eleventh Primarch was the penultimate one to be found. So when they say he was the third to be found, do they mean including Alpharius and Omegon? Or I guess technically just Alpharius? Um, because obviously Alpharius was on Earth. Possibly, you know, again, you never know with what Alpharius is saying or what the records of him say, whether they're true or not. Um, but yeah, I wonder if he's the third including Alpharius or the third excluding Alpharius. There is also additional evidence to suggest that both the 2nd and 11th legions took part within the xenocidal campaigns against a race known as the Rangdon. The Rangdon xenocides were officially undertaken by the Dark Angels and Space Wolves legions approximately around 860 M30, and these campaigns were some of the bloodiest and most devastating series of wars during the entirety of the Great Crusade. This was due to the Rangdon race not only being extremely aggressive, but also extraordinarily advanced at a technological level. The conflict itself would last over the course of several decades, reaping a costly toll upon the Imperium as the Xenos race scoured many worlds entirely of human life. The website The Regimental Standard hints towards the Lost Legions having taken part during this conflict with the Dressing a Lasgun Wound article. This specific article is crudely superimposed over an old field guide intended for members of the Solar Auxilia, the elite shock troopers of the Imperial Army. Unfortunately, due to a printing error, the section of your uplifting primer dealing with field dressing a Lasgun wound has accidentally been replaced with a concise history of the Rangdan Xenocides and a complete guide to fighting the sinister Xenos. This is a feature that would, in its own way, be invaluable had the Rangdan not been exterminated 10 millennia ago and had the guide not been based on embellished accounts that include tactics, weaponry, regiments and space marine legions that do not, as far as we can tell, appear to exist. Interesting, so th there's actually like materials that exist that still reference them within the Warhammer 40k universe. I'm surprised that's not, uh, yeah, that would be like being in like medieval Europe and finding like some lost sea scroll type stuff where you know it's a different telling of the Bible, it'd be you know probably burnt. The details that can be made out from the field manual before it is cut off by the overlaid editorial is that the solar auxilia were to be reinforced by both the 2nd and 11th legions for the duration of the campaign. This does seem to tie into information 
detailed within Horus Heresy Book 7, Inferno. So, so within the universe, do they refer to them as Legions 1 through 20? And if so, what is the in-universe, like, canon excuse for why 2 and 11 don't exist? Is it just like we decided to skip those numbers because they're unlucky or something? When chronicling the aftermath of the conflict, it states the following. Whole expeditionary fleets went to their deaths without a single survivor. Worlds were laid waste. Dozens of Titan legions obliterated and by the end, entire Space Marine legions, redacted section, lost to the Imperium. Given that some of the data... What do they mean by, like, were lost to the Imperium? As in, like, you know, the Imperium couldn't find them, or lost to the Imperium as in they lost the war to the Imperium? To regarding the losses incurred by the Legione Astartes is redacted, with many of the records regarding the details of the conflict being described as being kept under lock and key. This would seem to suggest that, in conjunction with the information from the Regimental Standard, that the Rangdon Xenocides would be the last campaign the Lost Primarchs themselves would undertake prior to their erasure from Imperial records. But this hypothesis is, in itself, not without flaws. The bottom of the field guide, which is still visible, reads not only the mandatory Hail the Emperor, but it also reads Hail the Warmaster. The Warmaster rank itself didn't exist within the Imperium until after the Ulanor Crusade, which pitted the Emperor's forces against the vast hordes of the Orc Warlord, Erlak Erg. The culmination of this crusade saw the Emperor bestow the title of Warmaster upon Horus Lupercal of the Lunar Wolves Legion, giving the Primarch authority to lead the crusade in his stead, while the Emperor returned to Terra to undertake his secret webway project. The culmination of the Ulanor Crusade took place in 000 M31, after the Emperor's reunion with Alpharius, who would take command of the Alpha Legion around 981 M30. As we can see, both of these events occurred after the 2nd and 11th Primarchs were erased from Imperial records. This would imply that the viability of the information presented within the Regimental Standard is somewhat questionable, unless for whatever reason, the Emperor also held the rank of Warmaster prior to the triumph of Ulanor. But admittedly, that possibility is extremely unlikely in the grand scheme of things. Given the sardonic and oftentimes satirical nature of the Regimental Standard website as a whole, it could simply mean that this is meant as nothing more than a tongue-in-cheek reference or easter egg, meaning that its canonicity is debatable at best. Are there any other documented feats that we may have missed? If you know of any, then leave a comment below, and thanks for watching. Okay, so yeah, the, the only one I'm aware of is Sanguinius referencing them, uh, implying that one of them had something similar to the Blood Curse. Um, I actually want to kind of read some of these. What do we got here? Uh, so we have, uh, in the book The Horse Heresy 2, uh, a thou uh, 12, A Thousand Sons, is a dialogue between Magnus and Mortarion right before the Great Parade in front of the Emperor on Olinor. Magnus reminds Mortarion of a prior meeting, to the meeting of the Nine Brothers on an unknown planet. Here's the bad translation from German to English. Brother Magnus replied, ignoring Mortarion's remark, Nine Sons of the Emperor came together on one world. Something like this has not happened since... I know very well, uh, since when it did not happen anymore, Mortarion interrupted him. His voice was firm and determined in a stark contrast with his pale face. And the Emperor has forbidden from us f to ever talk about it again. Do you disregard his command? This may indicate both a free and warlike gathering before the horse became a war master. Um, uh, something I have never seen mentioned by anyone is a little tidbit from the first heretic. In a discussion between the two word bearers, uh, when they have it says Nien, I think it means bean when they have been brought through the emperor's laboratory th laboratory through some warp shenanigans it is mentioned that one of the lost legion primarchs is exact quote from the originals 
Uh, Zaphon moved away from the others, coming in the pod, Estra's Z, uh, Estra with 11. Uh, rather than peering into the depths, he looked over his shoulder at, Ar- at Argaltal. Then the Primarch sleeps within this pod, still innocent, still pure. I ache to end this now, he confessed. Elnor chuckled from behind the ch- chaplain. It would save us all a lot of effort, wouldn't it? And would spare Aurelian a heartbreak. This, as the past space holes, weren't the only legion involved in the eradication of the lost and the purge. It further hints that the eleventh may have been corrupted by chaos, uh, with the still pure reference. Um, yeah, so it seems those are the only two references that are in here. Everything else is just talking about them. Oh, one says, I wonder if Alfarius or Omegon could secretly be one of the lost Primarchs. Um, that would honestly be an interesting theory. So, so yeah, it seems like they're pretty inconsistent with the stories about what they are, which I guess kind of makes sense considering so much of the knowledge has been purged and it's like all kind of, you know, the little bit you do know is hearsay. I would honestly love if they did like a Warhammer 30k, I don't know, book, movie, video game, something where they go into them, but I feel like so much of the the hype around them is the mystery that it would be very difficult to introduce them because almost nothing would meet expectations. The only fi- the only way I feel like they could really meet expectations, well, one, they would have to make one good and one bad, right? So I feel like you could probably have, like, the good one be the War Master, have him be, like, insanely powerful even compared to all the other Primarchs, uh, and then he goes down in, like, some heroic last stand, um, where he has to be forgotten for some reason, right? Maybe because he's a Primarch, he's supposed to be seen as a demigod, so, like, he can't die, so they just erase him from history. You know, he kind of lets himself die type thing. Um, lets himself die and be forgotten to save the Empire. I could see that being one thing. And then the other one, maybe because he was a Chaos, uh, you know, was the first one to be corrupted by Chaos even before Horus. But other than that, I feel like they, there's really no way they could introduce them without pissing off a large section of the fan base because no matter what they would do it almost seems like it would not be good enough with you know 40 years of hype behind these two lost primarchs uh but anyway let me know what you think below like comment subscribe and i'll see you in the next one